you've seen some of my other videos, you might recognize this from a video I did where I tried to uh, sort of draw pictures with a theremin, uh, you know, so basically plugging in the control voltages out of the theremin into this to try and draw a picture. And then also just basically plug in synthesizers into it and see what happens. It basically treats voltages as X, Y coordinates and it sort of plots it out on a piece of paper with a pen that unfortunately this machine did not come with. In the theremin etch sketch video, I basically cable tied a bunch of pens to it uh, because yeah I don't have the consumable parts and they're quite hard to find. If you have a look you'll see that I've already started to take it apart. The back is here and this is the back and it's got all of the boards and the electronics and there's even a list of what the boards do on the inside of the back panel. I first discovered XY plotters when I went to Mono in Berlin and they even gave me a broken one which unfortunately was a little bit of a time consuming thing to fix but they showed me some pictures that were drawn with their working XY plotters and yeah they're pretty amazing machines. I would really like to have this somewhat usable in the museum that I'm setting up which is called the Museum of Everything Else sort of about obsolete technology and stuff and you know just creative things and this that and the other but it would be great to be able to have this uh, you know being set up and being able to be used. The problem is is there are two consumables that you have to worry about then there's the pens that are very hard to find for these things and there's the paper that they draw onto. Wouldn't it be great if we could use this without anything that needs to be constantly replaced? And then the other week an idea came to mind. My partner Melanie King who is an artist and she also has a YouTube channel about alternative photography processes. The link is in the description below if you're interested in that kind of stuff. She did a piece of artwork a year or so ago uh, called the Cosmic Ray Oscillograph. This is a machine that basically has a moving transducer assembly that has a mirror on top and this responds to sounds that's put into it and it vibrates. And then there's an ultraviolet laser that points at the mirror and this mirror and laser bounce accordingly to the sounds that are being put into the transducer. Then the laser beam goes from the mirror over to the slowly spinning disc on the wall and this slowly rotates and it's got glow in the dark pigment inside the resin that this disc is made of. So as it spins around it makes the waveform on it. It's sort of like a really cool looking analog oscilloscope. And then I realized this process of using ultraviolet light and glow in the dark pigment well that might be perfect for this project right here because it means that nothing needs to be constantly replaced. It's all just you know going to keep on going. The glow in the dark pigment is just going to run out of energy and then it will just start over again and people can use this you know to their heart's content. This is just some bog standard glow in the dark paper and this is just a bog standard ultraviolet laser. Oh it's not working. Uh, oh they're really rubbish but as you can see as you write on it well I bring the light down a little bit it, it basically records it onto the paper and then it stays there a cert for a certain amount of time and runs out of energy and disappears. So this is going to act as the pen on the plotter and this is going to act as the paper meaning that we don't need to constantly replace the pen and the paper. Ooh. So this only responds to 3 volts and from experience with helping Mel the Cosmic Ray Oscillograph I know that these don't like any voltages even slightly above 3 volts they just burn out straight away. So what I'm going to do is we're going to 3D print a mount for this and we're going to connect some wires to the back of this and have it dangling around somewhere. Now amazingly enough these lasers the outside is the plus and the inside is the ground. The another annoying thing with these cheap lasers is also the lens is sort of connected in the actual capsule. It actually makes it quite hard to remove everything intact and then just solder these in and it's the quickest and easiest way of doing it. So now I have this 3 volt voltage regulator sitting on this piece of strip board. Whoa. I've had to cut out a little bit, it's not the cleanest thing in the world but nothing that heat shrink won't cover up. <laughs> in order to make this turn on and off with trigger commands I've got this random uh, relay. I mean there's millions of ways to skin a cat and the way I'm going to skin this cat is using this relay. You can use a transistor or whatnot, but you know I'm just, I'm just doing it this way. Chew your beans. You can see the laser is lasering which is good news. Jubbly jubbly indeed. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> it looks awesome. So when I was looking around in the bit box, I found this joystick, uh, which isn't 100% ideal for this. In fact, it's a Hall effect sensor. So it's a little bit uh, difficult to work with the voltages. However, you know, got to make do with what we've got. The 
way the joystick that I have works, it means it's uh, offset in a slightly weird way, which makes the circuits a little bit complicated. I'm waiting for a more ideal joystick to actually turn up, but, but because it's a similar size, I'm just gonna build it with this one anyway and then replace it when the other one turns up. I am so pleased with this. Smiley face. Put some air on it. How cool is that? So here it is with a slightly thinner laser beam thanks to a comment made by Mira on a Patreon post I did about this the other day and they mentioned that it, you know, it might be better with a little bit of a finer accuracy. So here's a rather dodgy train that I tried drawing. <laughs> it's pretty damn cool and it's really expressive. And uh, now we're gonna go and plug it into some synthesizers. So now it's wired up with an X and Y axis to different synth voices. So the next thing you're gonna see is hopefully a musical sequenced piece that will sort of make a picture as well at the same time. Cosmo was looking pretty good, wasn't he? It's not perfect, it's sort of like a slow-mo, sort of oscilloscope artwork kind of thing. It's still cool regardless. Uh, so the next step for me to do is make it, well, bolt all of it together. I've got a, some polycarbonate turning up that is cut to size to sit over the top of it. It's gonna have half of its kind of case and stuff removed from it so you can see the working parts whilst it's being controlled and stuff by the joystick. So that's the next step on that project. And then it'll be able to be played on by people in the museum, woo! Anyway, the Cosmo song is downloaded over on my Patreon if you're interested, which needless to say supports the creation of all of these videos and machines and this, that and the other. And the museum which is opening within the next two months, I know it's soon. Anyway, I've been Luke Mum No Computer, don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to try it.